So each of these bits of art that I've got here is actually the same thing. It's made up of blocks. And you can see that more easily in some of these. Let's see if I can get a nice big version of this picture. It's all a bit blocky looking. Uh, but you might also know if you've done any sort of looked at photo photographs and stuff before, you notice it's got things like there are bits that are sort of sharper focus and bits that are fuzzier. Um, we've got shadows and reflections and all that sort of stuff that's uh, kind of a cool extra level on top of things that we get to play around with when we're making voxel art, in particular using the program we're going to use today called Magic of Voxel. Now, Magic of Voxel I'm a big fan of because it's free, like completely free. Um, but I really like, I like the art that people make out of this. There's just some really cool looking stuff. Stuff that's straight out of like a dream or maybe something that looks like an old computer game. That's one of my old favorite computer games from the Super Nintendo there. Uh, and just really impressive things. This one's really impressive. That one doesn't look like it's made out of voxels to me at all. Uh, it looks like it's a real life place, but that's actually made out of voxels as well. It's all blocky. Um, yeah. Yep, if I zoom in, not just digital artwork, but blocky digital artwork. Let's see if I can zoom. I don't think I've got a zoom. I will, ah, oh, it won't let me zoom in. Yes, if you look really carefully, it might be hard to see. Um, the text down here is really blocky and the guardrails are slightly blocky. Um, yeah, it's actually made out of voxels as well. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, but we're just gonna be starting off simple today. So I'm gonna swap my screen over to Magic of Oxel, which is the software that we are using. Where are you? There you are, Magic of Oxel. So if you have uh, Magic of Oxel uh, downloaded and running, then hopefully it looks a little bit like this. So this is uh, a voxel canvas in the middle here. It looks like one big block, down here, I can put the grid on and you can see there's actually like lots and lots and lots of blocks along there. In fact, this canvas at the moment is 40 blocks along, 40 blocks down the side and 40 blocks back to front. And that you can see up here near the top. That's telling me the, the dimensions of my canvas that I'm working in. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, learn a little bit of the basics uh, and then we're going to try and get you folks actually making some stuff on your own. Uh, and then I'm going to teach you a little bit more of some of the more advanced stuff. But there is so much more that you can do on this than we're going to be able to cover today. So please feel free to ask questions, but I'm not going to be able to get to absolutely everything um, today anyway. But still, let's see if we can understand some of the basics. So over on the left, we have our palette. And each one of these is a swatch is what we call it. It's a little, um, if you've ever been to the hardware store and you get the little thing with all the paint colors on it. Oh, my, my, yeah, the swatches. There we go. There's my camera back on. Uh, that's the same thing. It's a sample color. And each little color over here is a potential color that I could be making stuff over here on my canvas. Uh, uh, next to it, we've got the brushes. And that's kind of exactly what it sounds like. That's what we'd use to paint or to um, change and, and make stuff happen in our canvas. Uh, down the bottom, we've got some camera controls. We're going to be 3D things, so we need to be able to move around and have a look at it. And then on the right, we've got file stuff. So one really useful thing is down the bottom here, there's something that looks like a little circle with an arrow pointing into it. If you ever find yourself getting really lost because you move the camera in a weird direction and you don't know which way you are anymore, click on that one and it'll take you back to a sensible view. Uh, there you go, recenter camera. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at the brushes because this is the really useful stuff. Uh, first thing we need to learn about is you've got three modes. You can attach, you can erase, and you can paint. So what we want is this one here, the one that looks like a little dot, a little square. So if you click on that one, and you click on erase, uh, when you, click over here, you'll erase a square. You see I'm taking some away. And if I click and drag, then it will carve a big line. Uh, we can attach, so I can put something back. Now I've got green selected, so when I attach something, it's gonna come up green. But you notice that up here, you can't attach anything because it's right at the edges. And then over here, we've got 
paint. And that's where we don't attach or erase anything, we just change the color. I've made a fish. Blub, 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 blub. Smiley face. Oh, wow, that was a big smiley. Okay, that's a creepy looking fish now. Uh, I also, I'm going to suggest that what we do is I'm going to clear over here on the right hand side. If I clear, it's going to take everything away. And I'm going to just up the top where it says 40, 40, 40. I'm going to shrink things down. That's huge. I don't need that much. I'm just going to go down to 15. Type 15, hit enter. And we've got a little bit more manageable space. Now, what I want everyone to do, just as a, as a first sort of challenge, whilst you're getting used to it, is I want you to try making uh, with the dot selected and attach and pick a, pick a color, I reckon like gray, something like that will work. And I want you to try making, I'm going to give you a really simple object. I want you to try making a fork. See if you can make a, a fork for me, like you'd have uh, in the kitchen drawer. Super simple, and you really need to get used to moving the camera around. So you might have noticed I've been moving it around. I didn't actually talk about it. Um, if you're used to working in 3D, you might have already started doing it without even thinking about it. But the way that I move the camera around is by clicking and holding the right mouse button and then moving my mouse. And you'll see that it moves things around. And it can be a little bit um, easy to get a little bit disoriented with this at first, but it's... Uh, Oh, in fact, I have gotten disoriented and I realized I've actually drawn my fork on the wall. That's not the floor. <laughs> uh, but that's all right. It's, an, it's a pitchfork. It's a big one, like a garden fork. Now, it's worth pointing out at this point that one of the things I sort of mentioned, but um, we didn't talk about when uh, Tim went through it again slowly, is that it's often good to shrink down the size of the canvas is that you can you can do something that's made up of huge numbers of cubes and it looks pretty close to real life or you can use something that only uses a few and it's kind of a bit like a stylized version of things um, and for starters i think it's probably really good to start with the smaller thing and that's why up here um, i changed it to only be 15 squares by 15 instead of 40 by 40 by 40. Um, if it's 40 by 40 by 40, you'll end up making a big, huge thing. And there's so many squares on the screen that it can be a bit overwhelming. Um, so if you do find that you get a bit overwhelmed, then just up here where it has those three numbers, you can just change that to a smaller number and it will change the size of the workspace that you're in. All right. So we've made a couple of things. They're pretty cool. Um, I'm going to make one more thing really quickly. I'm going to do this one quickly. Uh, and I'm going to make myself a candle. Uh, if you want, you can make yourself a candle, but I'm just doing this because I want to show you the next bit. That looks more like a Minecraft torch. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to show you something next, um, and then I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about those brushes but it's important for you to understand something about how um, Magic of Voxel works before we go too much further. Um, so there are three basic parts of Magic of Voxel. The first one is modeling, which is what we've been doing so far. And you might be able to see up in the top corner, it says model. So that's, that's the area that we're in. There's also render, which is what I'm about to go into and show you some stuff. And then the third one is called world editor. Um, which we won't really be able to get into today. But basically, if you wanted to make a really big thing, um, you know, instead of having to make one giant big canvas, then you can break it down into smaller ones and move them all together. But if you go into render, um, modeling is where we place all the blocks. Render is where we basically make it look pretty. So when I go into render, it's actually calculating. You can see the progress bar at the top. Uh, what all the shadows will do, where the light's coming from, all of that important stuff. And whenever I move it, it goes a little bit grainy because it has to start those calculations again. 
So this is what we talk about, like, um, you know, if there's a Pixar movie or something and they talk about needing huge computers to do that, it's the rendering that takes forever. It's actually calculating where all the light moves in the room. But one of the really important things, and I'm only jumping in here really quickly to show you, is that in Magic of Voxel, we can muck around with what we call materials. I can say, for example, make this fork, which is supposed to be metal. If I click on metal, I can make it kind of reflective. Can you see that it's starting to actually look a little bit shiny? In fact, I can probably move it so I can see, there we go, a reflection of the yellow top of my candle coming out of my shiny metal fork. So there are a few different materials that you can make stuff out of, uh, and that's just really important to keep in your head when you're modeling something. So for example, with my drinking glass, I can actually make that outside of it transparent. Uh, and that's going to be really important if you were to uh, make some voxel art, like this one here, see these beautiful um, uh, fish tanks? Let's see if I can get a better version of it. These fish tanks, they've got lots of transparent stuff in them. But you need to have known that you could make things transparent early on in the process of building it so that you can kind of include that. So if I want to make my, let's make my wine a little bit transparent, or my Coca-Cola, and now you should be able to see that I can actually see through my glass to stuff on the other side. How how far I make it across the transparency thing, it's a little bit sort of not perfectly clear. Now it's pretty perfectly clear. And you can kind of muck around with all these settings and get different looks. So you've got diffuse, which is the normal material, metal, which I've shown you, glass. I'm going to skip over these ones for now, but I want to show you emit because that's the other important one. That's why I made myself a candle. If I were to select my flame here and make it emit, then it starts to, let's make it even more powerful, it starts to glow. It's a little bit hard to see here because it's kind of a bright scene, but well, I'm just going to bring the sun down. You might be able to see that my yellow candle here is actually shining light onto the other objects in the scene. It's even casting some shadows here. So being able to make stuff that emits light can be really, really cool as well when you want to make, say, the lights in this picture, or if you want to make um, like this cool glowing doorway or something like that. So it's just important that you know that you can do that stuff, but we're going to stick mostly to modeling. But do muck around in there uh, and have a bit of a play.